welcome to this week's preview show here at Vitality Stadium. BBC Radio Solent's Chris Temple is back alongside me as we look ahead to this weekend in the Premier League. Here's what's coming up. We'll be discussing that narrow 1-0 defeat against Arsenal at the Emirates Stadium. We'll also be discussing the international break and who played where around the world. And finally, we'll be looking ahead to tomorrow's game against Norwich City here at Vitality Stadium. But first, we're going to start back two weeks ago and that game against Arsenal at the Emirates Stadium. Chris, it would uh, certainly be fair to say it was a game of two halves, wasn't it? It was. We've seen that quite a few times at Bournemouth where they have sort of taken 45 minutes to, I don't know, get themselves set, either settled in the game or you know, not be too defensive, which can sometimes happen, particularly away at the big teams as well. Um, yeah, the first half you were thinking, Phew, this could end up being, you know, a couple of the four or fives that we've seen at the big clubs in the past. Second half, you know, you're looking at some some great chances uh, or a couple of notable opportunities anyway, much more like, you know, the, the fluid football that Bournemouth can play, particularly away from home on the counter. Um, and yeah, it, it did seem like the, I mean, Eddie said it, the shackles came off in the second half and, um, you know, obviously they had to get themselves back in the game, so they needed to score and therefore they needed to approach the game with a bit more offensiveness if you like but yeah in the end you know you're looking and thinking well possibly they could have come away with something from there and you're talking of those chances there was none better than that Callum Wilson one was there where he rounded the keeper and he squared it and again when you want to look you start to get a bit of form coming together um, and you're thinking okay well here's a great chance now and the way things have been going recently the goals have been going in you know Callum's been in form you know it was unselfish for him to square it there was nobody quite there you think Callum earlier in the season when he wasn't scoring, he probably would have got on himself there in his desperation to find a goal. So sometimes the decision making, you know, is you know, it's 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 borderline in the heat at the moment. Um, but at the, away from home at Arsenal, that's the kind of chances that you need to make something of. You don't get too many opportunities as good as that. Um, and not many teams will go to Arsenal and, and give them the problems that Bournemouth gave them in the second half, or certainly give them as much to think about. So yeah, all in all, you know, no points, no goals, but uh, certainly a performance that I don't think has left anybody feeling particularly negative. Yeah, the first half wasn't that good and Eddie was frustrated that it took them 45 minutes to get out of the blocks but um, yeah I think coming back off the international break that's a performance that you know keeps the momentum that's been building in the last few weeks albeit in defeat. And as you say yes the first half wasn't perfect but actually for all of Arsenal's possession they didn't actually test Aaron Ramsdale too much the defence limited Arsenal to, to their chances. Yeah and the goal was a bit soft you know never lose his head it was a, bit, a little bit soft wasn't it as well you know in terms of set pieces it'd be disappointed to concede a goal like that as well it, it wasn't the most forceful header in the world it was beyond Aaron Ramsdale you know nothing he could do about it but you know you think of conceding from set pieces that's a, a little bit disappointing but yeah for all the offensive quality that, that Arsenal have got um, you know and the, the relatively new look and inexperienced back four we say inexperienced because Rico and Stacey fullbacks haven't played that many games um, you know in a row but Rico looks like he's, he's growing with this little run of starts he's having Jack Stacey continues to grow and you know he's up against some very good players the like of which he hasn't faced on a weekly basis you can play them in the cup one off here and there but to be fa facing them week in week out and to have that mental test every single week um, so yeah I think the new back four looks to have been you know for a, if you put together all the teams the defenders of how many appearances they put together um, to go and only concede one at Arsenal I think again that shows positive blocks for the future and just a word on Diego Rico there he's had a, a run in the team and he's come away with September's Player of the Month, which is something last year, to be honest, fans couldn't really see happening. I'd, I'm not sure anybody could see that happening. With the greatest of respect to Diego, you know, we've been critical, or you haven't so much, I've been critical on here in the past that we haven't seen enough from him. He would admit that himself, I'm sure. But again, you speak to the players and they say, you know, on the training ground, he's, you know, he shows, shows promise, he shows some of the ability that made Eddie Howe pay £10 million for him. You know, some of his set pieces and his assists is where he's going to be proving valuable, you know, without the likes of David Brooks and Ryan Fraser not in the team at the moment. So set pieces and things, he's a with that left foot, he's a, you know, a, a key figure in the team. But defensively, he's where there's been a few question marks. Um, and he is an attacking fullback, really. He's one who wants to get forward. He's an Eddie Howe type of fullback. He doesn't really have fullbacks that just sit in the defensive line. They're always, you know, almost auxiliary wingers at times, which sometimes can be the undoing of the team as well. But no, really pleased for Diego that he's, he's been voted as the, the player of the month. And he, you know, hopefully will continue to benefit from this, this run of starts he's getting, you know, albeit slightly fortunately because of Charlie's injury and Adam Smith's injury, but as one door closes, etc., um, he's taken his chance. Absolutely. And, and just on that Arsenal game, when you look at previous performances against Arsenal and, you know, our results there in recent years, I think it was 5-1 last year, it was a much improved performance, you know, going there and, and sitting tight and creating our own chances, which is something, you know, in, in the last few years we haven't done. Yes, Lise Musset scored last year, but again, it was on the back of a defensive mistake. 
Yeah, I mean, how many times have we been to you know a big grounds and, and come away on the on the back of Pannings where, again, it's that balance between defence and attack. You can't come out in the first 15 minutes and just go blazing um, because you'll get picked off and we've seen that happen before. But at the same time, if you sit back, that's inviting trouble as well. So the balance wasn't right in the first half. Between that, it was a little bit too defensive and a little bit allowing Arsenal to dictate. But in the second half, you know, whether it was the, you know, the spur of having gone behind and having to find a reaction um, and to get a goal to get something from the game, but it shouldn't need a team to fall behind to, to provoke that reaction. So, yeah, um, all in all, as I say, the, the ball continuing to roll in the right direction, even though it was a defeat. It wasn't a defeat that sort of saps the momentum out of that recent run. And just finally, when you look back on, on the last block of games, the four, four games between September's international break and October's international break, two wins, a draw, and then obviously that defeat against Arsenal, it's nothing to be ashamed of. Is it? No, that's a good block. That's a, that's a good block of four. Um, you know, West Ham games, one that got away, of course, here, but again, a performance that had, you know, some plenty of positives about it. Lots of VAR, you know, goals chalked off and chalked on um, in, the, in that little block of games as well. Um, but yeah, strikers scoring, you know, Callum's found his form. Um, Joshua King contributing from open play as well in, in recent matches. So, uh, and defensively looking, you know, reasonably solid. One or two sort of sloppy mistakes to give away goals. But actually, you know, Aaron Ramsdale continues to sort of exert himself in goal and have authority over the back line as well, which is great to see. And, you know, have, obviously having a great international break as well with England under 21. So he'll continue to grow in stature. So so all in all, that was a good block. Look at the next block coming up, which we'll get onto in a bit, but starting with Norwich, Watford, Man United, Newcastle. You know, there's three games in there that you look and think in this, there's some points to be had. Absolutely. Well, earlier this week, our international players returned to Vitality Stadium and are back in training. Let's take a look at how they've got on. Well, great to have those lads back in training. 12 players called up overall, and, and we'll start with Callum Wilson. He had that glorious chance for England, didn't he? Should have scored. He knows it. You know, he should have scored. What a great chance, and he's been crying out for minutes, really. He hasn't really had that many opportunities with England recently. Obviously, he was ill for the first game. Um, but uh, the second game, you know, and he looked actually bright. He came on at left midfield, you know, left wing, which uh, <laughs> Eddie Howe said it had given him some, some food for thought. The one person I'm pretty sure would be pleased to see Callum Wilson excelling at left, left midfield would have been Joshua King, because that might give him a chance to play down the middle, uh, like he's been crying out for. But no, in all seriousness, I mean, Callum will know he should have scored. A couple of great little link-ups in the few minutes he did get. Um, he looked sharp, you know, he looked like, looked like a guy who's found his, found his feet this season. Um, and, you know, he's, he's right up there in the scoring charts in the Premier League, so quite rightly getting his opportunity. And for him, you know, unfortunately, all the while Harry Kane's fit, England minutes are going to be hard to come by. So, um, at least in those few minutes he got in Bulgaria, he took his opportunity. So, yeah, really pleased for him. And in terms of the under-21s, the Young Lions, at one point we had three, player, three of our players on the mm. pitch at the same time, which is, is quite something, you know, for Eddie and his staff and, and the academy guys with Sam Sturridge. Yeah, well, let's start with the guy who's not here at the moment, Sam Sturridge, because I think that was a complete surprise to him, let alone anybody else, that he got a very late call-up for that squad, but managed to get on in both games and also scored, obviously, in his, his first game. So that's brilliant for him. And, you know, we think of the impression he made when he got a couple of appearances last season um, in the first team when, when needs must and they were sort of down to the bare bones of, of players so yeah great for him he's having a good season at Swansea um, and hopefully we'll continue to to flourish and come back here and be a first team sort of contender if you like um, yeah and Aaron Ramsdale you know he's un um, unequivocal number one for England under 21s and Lloyd Kelly playing the full game as well you know still waiting for his Premier League debut we've seen him briefly in the League Cup um, but you know he's still waiting to get on that pitch in the uh, the Premier League 
And at the moment, for him, unfortunately, the way the defenders have been playing, Diego Rico's performance is probably, you know, Lloyd Kelly's the one who's knocking on the door at left back if Diego Rico, you know, his standard slip, I guess. Um, so he's having to be patient and wait his chance. But again, he, you know, he, I think he contributed an assist in that game as well. So, yeah, really good for him to be, to be getting minutes, albeit if you can't get them here. And you mentioned Sam Surridge scoring. Another person who scored was Joshua King, a last-minute penalty for, for Norway against Spain. Yeah, they, they rescued late draws in both their games, didn't they, Norway? Um, pressure penalty, that one as well, you know, against, uh, against Spain. Last minute, unbeaten home record to protect as well. So, yeah, that showed a good coolness. He doesn't miss too often from the spot these days, Joshua King. So, yeah, that was um, a notable moment for him as well. Um, you know, and some you know, good minutes elsewhere for other players. Well, Nathan Ake, unfortunately, didn't get on. Um, you think of, you know, Gavin Kilkenny got a bit of time for the Irish under-21s. Um, Harry Wilson obviously came on for both, in both games for Wales as well. Um, so, yeah, just picking out a few of the names who, and Jefferson Lerma got a full 90 for Colombia and thankfully only had to go to France to get it as well because they played Algeria in France. So good for him to get minutes without having to travel halfway across the world. Absolutely. And I, I think in this last international break across, you know, under 21s, under 19s, seniors, we've had 12 players called up and that really does show how far the club's come, hasn't it? You know, to have 12 players called up and, and get international recognition. Yeah, and I think also, you know, notably getting called up at international under 21 level as well shows a real emergence of some of the club's younger players. You know, they may not be featured featuring so much in the first team, but some of the guys we mentioned, the Kilkennys of this world, and you know Mark Travers in the Irish full squad, who's under 21, but in the senior squad. So, you know, there, there's some, some real good prospects for the future there. And it shows what we've said before, that the club is starting to produce players that are eventually, and you know, maybe a year or two, going to be knocking on the first team door regularly here. And you have got to produce some of your own, you know, these days, Clubs are with the amount of money they've got can go out and buy anybody, but you do still need to produce your own. Um, not just because it you know keeps that connection with the fans as well. Someone they may have watched on the playing for the under 19s at Canford Park Arena, seeing them in the Premier League. You know, for the fan that that completes a bit of a journey as well. So I think it's really encouraging, particularly the number of under 21s and under 19s who are getting international minutes. Absolutely. Well, next up here at Vitality Stadium is the visit of Norwich City, and Eddie Howe has been speaking in this morning's press conference. Uh, incredibly disappointing to see. Um, I watched it live and yeah, it was a tough watch. Um, although you couldn't hear anything, you, you could sense what was happening at the stadium. I have to say, I thought Callum and the rest of the England players acted with real class, dealing with the situation and then getting on and playing the game and played ever so well as well. So, uh, you know, full credit to everyone involved with how they reacted, I think. Yeah, we did some good work. We were left with a small group, but we did some good work in terms of, I think we had a behind closed doors game, a little bit of team building in there. Players went and visited the academy during the week, which was really nice. So we, we've we filled the time, hopefully, in a productive way for the club. Team news is we're, we're pretty much as we were. Adam Smith's getting closer. David Brooks is still some way away. So is Dan Gosling. Uh, so is Junior Stanislas. Well, they've approached the Premier League in a, a Norwich City fa fashion under Daniel, really. they've, um, I think they've been really impressive. Um, and I admire any team that has a clear philosophy and sticks with it. And they're a very attacking team. We know we're going to have to be very good in this game um, in all aspects of our play because they're a dangerous team. Well, that was Eddie Howe speaking just this morning. Chris, if we uh, re rewind the clock to almost this time last year, we played Norwich here in the Carabao Cup and, and it was they, they played very well. They didn't win, but there were certainly a lot of encouraging signs there, weren't there? They were going well in the Championship at the time. They weren't top, they were fourth. They were still making their way through the Championship. But yeah, they, I mean, to be honest, they were pretty unlucky not to get something from that game here. That, as you say, that was pretty much exactly a year ago. Um, in Next week, I think it was. So yeah... <sighs> So they've started life in the Premier League as so many teams do. You know, the championship to the Premier League is such a big jump. They're conceding goals for fun at the moment. They're the leakiest defence in the uh, the division. Obviously, got pumped five one at home by by Villa in a game which actually, if you look at the stats. Um, there were 43 shots in the game. Norwich had 21, Villa had 22 shots. Uh, Norwich's problem were half of them, I think, ended up in the stand rather than troubling the goalkeeper. So, um, yeah, they, they're, they're finding their balance at the moment. We should say they've got uh, quite a few injury problems. Um, key players like Alex Tetty has been out. Tim Krul, the keeper, has missed the last couple of games. Obviously, he's a very experienced um, Premier League campaigner. Onel Hernandez, who scored the goal here for them um, in the, the League Cup as well. Tom Tribal in midfield has been out. Um, so they have had quite a few injury issues, which when you're you know you're making the transition you want all your best players available goes without saying so I think Daniel Farker has been dealt a difficult hand they haven't had the easiest fixtures either saying all of that they've beaten Man City so you know how do you judge Norwich in those in the first sort of eight games I think you know they'll have learned a few lessons that's for sure they like to keep the ball they like to play possession football they like to counter-attack 
Um, so all the right ideas are there, but certainly it's been a case of um, learning some harsh lessons to find their feet at the moment. And as you say, they did beat Man City. They came very close to beating Chelsea, just losing 3-2. They got a win against Newcastle, so they can get a result when they need to. And it's something to be wary of, isn't it? I've got to say, their fans are absolutely fantastic. You know, even when Norwich slipped to League One, they still used to sell out Carrow Road. Um, so the, the home form for them is going to be massive this season. I think that that's a, a cliche and everyone would have said that at the start of the season. Um, away from home, struggling a bit. They've only scored one goal all season, including away at Crawley in the League Cup. Saying that, Bournemouth, you know, lost at Burton. So... Premier League teams do struggle in the League Cup away from home sometimes um, and that goal was at Liverpool on the opening day of the season so they haven't scored since the opening day of the season on the road which is a worry for them um, obviously Timu Puki um, is, is right up there like Callum Wilson in the, the scoring charts at the moment scored a couple for Finland um, they're on the brink of making their first ever major tournament Finland if they uh, can beat Liechtenstein next month so that will be a huge you know and he's been a huge part of that Timu Puki um, and he's settled into the Premier League life very easily I think only De Bruyne and Aguero have contributed to more goals this season than him. So he's one certainly to be aware of. Plays up front on his own. Um, they sort of play a 4-2-3-1 kind of formation. Be interesting to see though, they, there's talk that Tim Krul could be back tomorrow. Um, he's been training, I think, this week. I think Alex Tetty has been training as well, who's a sort of dynamic figure in the centre of their midfield, quite key. So, you know, they may well have one or two back, which would be, which would be big for them. But their away form certainly... If I had a fiver, I wouldn't be putting it on Norwich tomorrow, given what they've shown away from home so far. And as you said, you know, they, they have had their injuries. They've had problems with their goalkeeper situation. I think they're, they're number one and number two both being injured. They had the likes of Todd Cantwell, who's been hugely influential for them, pulling out of international duty. So for them, even seeing a couple of players coming back into the squad, it'll be a huge confidence boost for them, won't it? Yeah, and actually, when you look at the team that played here in the League Cup last season, quite a lot of them have been involved this season in the Premier League. So, you know, that a lot of the players who got them up last season, there's obviously a big foreign contingent in there. Daniel Farkas brought quite a few players over from Germany with him. Um, and quite a few of them who've been on the fringes have had to be playing recently. Um, you know, they're missing Zimmer at the back one of their centre halves as well another another key miss so um, yeah they yeah they've got some promising young players you think of Max Ahrens at the right back who's been in the England under 21 set up he contributed an assist this week played in the the same team as Aaron Ramsdale and and Lloyd Kelly as well so they'll know him well um, Ben Godfrey at, at centre half they've got some some good young English talent as well Jamal Lewis left back who's Northern Irish international as well so um, it's a nice mix of sort of homegrown young players and then the foreign imports if you like um, but as soon as you take two or three quality players out of uh, of a team trying to get used to life in the Premier League and everything they've worked on over the summer they've had some strange injuries I think Onel Hernandez fell down the stairs or something at home somebody else pulled a calf muscle doing something in pre-season so they haven't had you know Lady Luck has not been shining on them um, but no, we heard Chris Sutton you know, on the BBC say if ex-Norwich striker, if Norwich carry on playing with their philosophy, they're going to go down. I think it's a bit early to say that, but every team, you know, Fulham were shipping goals for fun last season. Um, Bournemouth couldn't keep the goals out when they first came into the Premier League. It happens to everybody who has an attacking mentality. Um, so it is, you know, it's, we're only eight games in. It's, it's very early to be judging them. What we would say is any team that can beat Man City and nearly beat Chelsea, as you say, beat Newcastle at home, um, you know, is, is worth taking seriously, absolutely. Absolutely, and, and in sticking with injuries, in terms of our injury news, Eddie said, you know, we're very much the same, but Adam Smith's been training and, and Chris Meppham's been training despite pulling out of, of international duty last week. Yeah, and, you know, Adam Smith's been a key player. You know, versatility, you know, maybe hasn't always helped him personally because he hasn't really, he's been right back, left back, right midfield, left midfield. He's played, you know, pretty much everywhere on the flanks as Adam Smith. Um, so it'd be interesting to see when he's fully fit. I, I imagine he'll, they'll want to try and get him back in. Um, but Jack Stacey's been playing well. Eddie's usually pretty loyal. Um, he'll stick with players who've been doing well. So if Adam Smith is, is fit enough for this weekend or whether we have to wait for, for Watford next week, we'll wait and see. But, you know, he's got a battle on to get back in, that's for sure. Um, you know, look at Lewis Cook. The, the fanfare about Lewis's, Lewis Cook's return played, what was it, one game, two games? And then I can't find himself back in with that Lerma and Billing partnership difficult to dislodge. Jefferson Lerma's obviously on four yellow cards. So um, that, you know, could be a route back in. <laughs> A predictable route back into the team for Lewis Cook, that's fair to say. Some and things Phil, don't change, do no, they? Phil Billings on three, so you know, no surprise to see that they're sort of suspensions pending, possibly. Um, but yeah, and Simon Francis, you know, has come back and can't get back in at the moment. And so you look a bit further down the line at the likes of David Brooks, who and he's not so keen to put a time scale on it, but getting closer is, you know, he's been saying that for a few weeks. <laughs> Everyone's getting closer, I suppose, every day. You and I are getting closer, <laughs> put it that way. So David Brooks to have him back again. Brian Fraser can't get in the team, you know, so there's. There's all of a sudden the bench is starting to look strong and when there are changes that need to be made, 
it looks like Eddie's going to start to have a few options pretty soon. Yeah, the bench certainly is starting to look strong. And, and just before we go, it is that time. I'm going to ask you for your score prediction for, for this weekend. I'm pretty sure last time I was here, I obviously got it bang on. I can't even remember the last game I was here for, but I'm pretty sure I said it was going to be the right score. Um, I fancy Bournemouth quite strongly this weekend. Um, home form actually has been a bit indifferent for the Cherries, isn't it? I mean, great win over Everton, you know, let it slip against West Ham. Um, promoted teams don't have a good record here. Uh, Fulham, the only promoted team to win here in the Premier League. Let's not remind Let's ourselves. Let's not remind ourselves of that one. Uh, I'm going to go, I don't think Norwich will score. I'm going to go 3 0 Bournemouth. Wow, 3 0 Bournemouth. You heard it here first. If you are over 18 and you want to have a go at predicting the score for this weekend's game, please head over to Cherries Champions in partnership with Mansion Bets Online. This week's winner will win two hospitality tickets to our next home game with Manchester United. That's all we've got time for today. If you are coming here tomorrow, we look forward to seeing you then. And if not, make sure you keep an eye across all of our social media and listen to BBC Radio Solon and Chris on commentary for all the latest updates. Bye for now.